As a kid in Oklahoma, I saw a tornado, and that's what that was this afternoon. By U.S. standards, the Pacific Northwest sees relatively few tornadoes, but they do occur. Most of these tornadoes are relatively weak and short-lived. A notable exception was the Vancouver, Washington tornado of 1972. This tornado was on the ground for nine miles and killed six people. It was the deadliest tornado in Pacific Northwest history and the first tornado fatalities in the region since 1894. On the morning of April 5, 1972, an upper-level trough was off the west coast with a strong south-southwest flow aloft. At the surface, a front was about to push inland along the Oregon coast. Temperatures in the air ahead of the front were close to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, with dew points around 50. The relatively warm, humid air near the surface, combined with cooler air moving in aloft, made the air mass marginally unstable. The incoming front would supply the necessary lift to initiate deeper convection later in the morning. Weather radars during the morning showed showers moving northeast across the coast range and into the Willamette Valley. In this image, the outlined areas represent areas of rain. The showers and storms brought strong winds to the Willamette Valley as they progressed north. Winds gusted as high as 76 miles an hour in Corvallis at 12.10 p.m. shortly after noon. Shortly before 1 p.m., radar showed a line of storms moving through the Portland metro area. These storms brought damaging winds to the Portland metro area. Winds unroofed a lumber warehouse in Tigert to the southwest of Portland, and trees fell on several homes and cars in Portland. Gusts were recorded to 48 miles an hour on the Morrison Bridge in Portland and to 82 miles an hour on Mount Scott. At the Portland airport, just to the east of where the tornado first touched down, winds gusted to 63 miles an hour. By 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the front had pushed through the Portland metro area. Some rotation to the low-level wind field was induced as south winds coming up the Willamette Valley ran into easterly winds coming out of the Columbia River Gorge. Around 12.45 p.m., a tornado touched down near a marina in North Portland at 33rd Avenue and Marine Drive along the Columbia River. After extensive damage to the marina, where it was described as a black mass, the tornado crossed the river, sending up a cloud of spray. After crossing the Columbia River into Vancouver, Washington, the tornado left a path of destruction unmatched by any tornado in Pacific Northwest history. Moving from the banks of the Columbia Northeast before finally lifting for the final time north of Vancouver, near Brush Prairie, Washington. In moving through several residential areas, the tornado damaged or destroyed about 50 homes. There were numerous reports of golf ball size hail with the storm. The greatest destruction occurred over a length of about two blocks in North Vancouver. It completely destroyed the Peter S. Ogden Elementary School, miraculously, without killing anyone despite school being in session. Governor Evans praised students from the neighboring high school for their efforts after the storm. I think it was a miracle that nobody was killed in the school building. I think the thanks can go to the high school students who responded immediately to this disaster. I was in the third grade at the time. We had just come in from our lunch recess, and our teacher, Miss Priel, was reading us, of all things, The Wizard of Oz. A block away, the tornado wrecked a bowling alley, and then after another half block, it destroyed a Wehrmacht market. Also badly wrecked in this area were a lumber store, service station, and other businesses in the shopping center. It was at the Wehrmart discount store in Sunrise Bowling Lanes that six people lost their lives. In all, the tornado track extended nine miles beyond the Columbia River, although there were large skips in its track towards the end. It lifted for the final time as it neared Brush Prairie to the northeast of Vancouver. Rated an F3 on the Fujita scale with winds estimated between 158 and 206 miles an hour, it is one of only three ever rated so strong in Washington or Oregon. Probably not coincidentally, one of the other F3 tornadoes touched down in eastern Washington later that day. Because of the Vancouver tornado, Washington led the nation in tornado deaths in 1972. For its size and impact, this tornado is unrivaled in Pacific Northwest history. It showed that while killer tornadoes are rare in the Pacific Northwest, they have occurred in the past and are likely to do so again in the future.